Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. My name is Seba, and in this short video from the Excel 101 series, we'll investigate how to format a scatterplot and how to visualize data using this go-to technique. And to investigate that, we've got quite a simple and a relatively cute data set where we've got 10 cats, and I know those cats by names, we record their age and the number of kittens they've got. And we might want to know what is a particular cat uh, looks like if we compare it to other cats, as well as to investigate maybe there is a trend, maybe there is a relationship between how old is a cat and how many kittens uh, did it manage to offspring. So here we can select those two columns first, and if your columns are not neighboring, you can obviously just hold control and select them this way, but let's keep it simple for now, selecting them both, clicking insert as a tab, then uh, right in the middle of the menu that will appear, we need to select uh, a chart that we want to uh, generate, and scatter plots will be uh, the rightmost element in the bottom line, insert a scatter chart. So we can open this drop down menu and select the simplest scatter on the top left of the drop down menu. And that will generate a default scatter plot with uh, a placeholder for the chart title. So we can either right click and delete that, or we could call it somewhat, call it something. For example, a cat scatter plot. Now, and economists will uh, remind you of that all the time, you always need to label your axes. So we can, clicking on the scatter plot, look at this uh, plus icon here and add chart elements. And we can click on axes titles and name our axes. Again, to know which axis is which, you can always go to the specification of your scatter plot, which would be in the select data format. Or you could always um, refer to the fact that the leftmost column is the x-axis and the rightmost column is the y-axis. What you also can know is, um, well, the nature of your data. You've got some observations with zeros as your um, y-axis um, variable, and that is obviously number of kittens and not age. So y-axis, the rightmost axis is the number of kittens. And the X axis is the age of our cat. So we can input it this way. Also, what we can do is change the range in terms of our axes. So we can right click on the axis and format it. This would immediately show us the minimum and the maximum. So for example, if we want to increase the range, uh, we can type in 20 here, and that would show us a wider range of potential cat ages we can reduce it. For example, as we know that our oldest cat is 14 years old, it's Nala, we can decrease it to 15, and that would automatically change the uh, units, change the uh, range between consecutive marks on the axis, and that's something that we can avoid by uh, saying that our minimum is zero as well, and changing our major unit to one for more granularity. So now we can see that the step is one, the unit is one for those grids to appear. And we can do obviously the same with the y-axis for the number of kittens. What we can also do is quite um, easily uh, construct a trend line on a scatter plot. For that, we need to right click on any of the dots. Each dot is a cat in our case, and click on add trend line. And by default, it will introduce a linear trend line. What we can also do is to uh, select the R squared value to see how well this trend line fits the data, as well as the trend line equation. So here we can have a look at why the number of kittens is positively related to cat age with every uh, another year in an average cat's life. Uh, the cat can give uh, birth or offspring around half another kitten. And uh, we have got also the intercept here, which is quite weirdly explainable in this case, but we won't worry about it now. What we uh, can see here is that if we change the type of our relationship, we can go for a logarithmic trend, we can even go for the polynomial trend, but I would advise to uh, also always consider the underlying economic, or in this case, even biological 
um, processes that undermine the data that you've got. So going for polynomial here would not make much sense, arguably, and uh, going for linear would be a much uh, more uh, reliable option. You can go for logarithmic, uh, keeping in mind that perhaps older cats have got uh, less opportunity to produce offspring, but a linear trend gives you a better fit in terms of the R squared, so we'll stick with that. In terms of the cosmetics, we can uh, format the dots, the scatters themselves, where if we click format data series, we'll be able to format the line or the marker. The line, you generally do not want to appear for scatter plots because it will try to link the data together. And uh, given the fact that the order in which those cats appear in our sample is just alphabetical, it is of little use for us. We can select no line instead. And uh, for the marker, we can format it however we want. We can uh, first format the border of our marker. So if we want, for example, to have our uh, outside border of a different color, we can always do that. So for example, we can make a purple border of our blue marker. And what we can also do is if we format our marker is to change uh, its type. So we can do none and then the markers would disappear or we can select built in to customize it. So for example, we can make it a little larger or a little smaller. What we can also opt for is to change its um, shape. So for example, go for a rectangular marker or for a triangular marker and leave it as it is. And what is also quite useful for visualization purposes is uh, to introduce labels or callouts. So for the data labels, we can um, hover over the data lab labels uh, option and select whether we want labels or callouts. So for labels, it will just generate um, data outside of every single scatter plot. For the callouts, if we select callouts instead, it will present them in a box. Again, it's your personal choice to do that design-wise. I'll go for labels in this case. And what is quite important is that we can format them and uh, choose to represent cat names uh, across those uh, particular scatters. So we can tick on the value from cells and select the range of cat names. So now those will appear alongside the respective triangles. And we can also uh, untick the Y value box so that only the name is presented. What is also useful is that we can uh, manually drag around those labels so that they're not overcrowded. So for example, here we can drag a gingerbread label. That's the cat called gingerbread, six years old, no kittens. And we see that if we drag it too far away from the triangle, there is a small line that appears that represents where this label comes from. So if we drag it close enough to the triangle, this will disappear. So here we see how we can quite fruitfully visualize uh, a data set and introduce trend lines, axes, and data labels or callouts uh, using some basic Excel functions. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful and stay tuned for more content like that in the Excel 101 series.